Welcome to my video on optimization. Optimization is one of my favorite topics in calculus because of how it's used in real world situations. Now, for example, a company might use optimization to find the maximum revenue. Or somebody designing a product might use optimization to find the minimum cost to produce that product. So these are just a few examples of how optimization can be used. Uh, the general idea is to find the maximum or minimum value for a particular situation. So to start off, I listed all of the steps that can be used for any type of optimization problem. And step number one uh, says to find the equation to maximize or minimize. And this step is usually the most difficult uh, just because this equation is never given to you. You, you have to use your, your intuition to find this equation to maximize or minimize. So let me show you what I mean what I mean by this by going over an example. And I started with an easier example just so you get a good idea about how this works. So here it says the, the product of two positive numbers is 20. So let's write this down. Um, we have two numbers. I'll label one as x and I'll label the other one as y. And we're multiplying them together and the product is equal to 20. The product of two positive numbers is equal to 20. All right, and if we move on, it says find the minimum sum. The sum is always addition. The sum of one of the numbers and five times the other. So we have, we have the sum is equal to one of the numbers, which is x, plus five times the other five times the other number, which is y. All right, and step number one says to find the equation to maximize or minimize. And this information is always given to us. It says find the minimum sum. So this sum equation, we have to minimize. We're going to minimize this sum equation. So we're going to find the two values of x and y, which give us the smallest value, which give us the minimum sum. So let's move on to step number two. So step number two says to reduce this equation to one variable. So if we go back to our example, this equation, which we're trying to minimize, notice how it has two variables. It has x and it has y. So we need to reduce this equation so it only has one variable. So this is where our other equation comes in handy. We can solve this equation for x or y and then plug it into our other equation. So let me show you what I mean by this. I'm going to solve for y. So if we divide both sides by x, notice how the, the x's on the left cancel each other out. So we're left with y is equal to 20 over x. So now we can plug this into our sum equation. So instead of writing sum, I'm just going to write s of x. The sum is equal to x plus 5 times y. And we know that y is equal to 20 over x. So I'm going to replace this y with 20 over x. So now we have rewrote this sum equation in terms of one variable x. So let's simplify this a little more before we move on to step number three. So the sum is equal to x plus five times 20. Five times 20 is equal to 100. And this is all over x. But instead of writing x in the denominator, I'm going to write it in the numerator. So if you bring it to the numerator, you have to write it with a negative one exponent. And the reason why I did this is because it's easier to take the derivative, which we're going to do later on in the problem. So let's move on to step number three. So step number three says to find the critical values. So in order to do this, we just need to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So let's go back to our example and we need to take the derivative of our function s of x. So let's do this. So the derivative of our function s of x is equal to the derivative of x, which is equal to 1. 
plus the derivative of 100 times x to the negative 1. So if we take the negative 1 exponent, multiply it by 100, we have a negative 100. And then we have to decrease this exponent by 1. So negative 1 minus 1 is equal to negative 2. So this is the derivative of our function s of x. And we need to set it equal to 0 to find our critical values. Now to solve this equation, the first thing we're going to do is get rid of this negative exponent. So we have 1 minus 100. Instead of x to the negative 2 in the numerator, you can write it as x with a positive 2 exponent in the denominator. And this is all equal to 0. And now what we can do is add 100 over x squared to both sides. So if we add 100 over x squared to both sides, on the left we have 1. And this is equal to 100 over x squared. Now what we can do is multiply both sides by x squared. So on the left hand side we have x squared times 1, which is just x squared. And on the right hand side, uh, the x squareds cancel each other out, and the only thing we're left with is 100. So now to get x by itself, we just need to square root both sides. So if we simplify this even further, we have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 100, which is equal to 10. But we know that this number has to be positive, because if we go back to the beginning of the problem, it says the product of two positive numbers. So we know that the numbers have to be positive. So because of this, we can eliminate this negative critical value, because we know that this value of x has to be positive. So now that we found this critical value, x equals positive 10, now we're ready to move on to step number 4. So step number 4 says to verify if the critical values are maximums or minimums. So let's go back to our example. So how do we verify if this critical value of positive 10 is a maximum, a minimum, or it could be neither? What I like to do is the second derivative test. Um, if we plug this critical value into the second derivative, we can find out if it's a maximum, minimum, or neither. So first let's take the second derivative. The second derivative of our function is equal to the derivative of 1, which is just 0. And then we can multiply a negative 2 times a negative 100, which gives us a positive 200 and then the exponent decreases by 1, so negative 2 minus 1 is equal to negative 3. So now, if we plug in our critical value of positive 10 into our second derivative, we can find out if it's a maximum or minimum. So if we plug in positive 10 into our second derivative, we get 200 times x, and we're going to plug in a 10 for x to the negative third power. And if you plug this into a calculator, you're going to get a positive number. It doesn't matter the exact value, but we know it's going to be a positive number. If the second derivative gives us a positive value, then we know that the critical value is a minimum. It's going to be a minimum. This critical value of positive 10 is a minimum which is good because in this problem we're trying to minimize so this x value needs to be a minimum. If we go back to our problem it says find the minimum sum so this critical value of x has to be a minimum. So now that we found our value for x it's really easy to find our value for y. We can just plug in our value for x into this equation so y is equal to 20 over x we know our value for x is equal to 10 y is equal to 20 over 10, which can be reduced to 2. So our value for y is equal to 2. So now that we found our values for x and y, we can answer the question. The question says, find the minimum sum. So we need to plug in these values into our sum equation. So our value for x is equal to 10, and the value for y is equal to 2. So if we plug these in, 10 plus 5 times 2 is equal to 20. This is our minimum sum. So this value of 20 is our answer. This is our minimum sum. This is the smallest sum you can find using the numbers x and y. 
So I hope this video gave you a better idea on how optimization is used. Um, there are many other optimization examples which are much different, so that's why I made a bunch of other videos as well. In the top left corner, I have the link for my video on finding the maximum volume of a box. In the top right corner, I have an example where we find the minimum fence for a given area. In the bottom left corner, I have the link for my example where we find the minimum time to cross a river. And in the bottom right corner, I have a business example where we find the, the maximum profit given the cost and demand. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one.